Hey everybody, this is Ed, and welcome to the Whiskey Tangent Podcast for another short. I'm here with Scott. Hey everybody. And today we're going to do another one of our famous quick tastes, and again, one that has been requested. Yes. Scott, tell everybody what we're doing. Well, Ed, we were contacted by someone from the William Grant and Sons marketing team uh, for the second short in a row. This is uh, Solicited Quick Taste. Whiskey short. Yeah, so William Grant and Sons has been around for 130 years, family owned, known for their scotch brands, a lot of them which you would know, and um, they wanted to get into the American whiskey market, and this is their um, their first foray into blended American straight bourbon whiskey, and it's called Fistful of Bourbon. Yeah, so it, it is just, as Ed said, it is a blended bourbon. It is a blend of five different bourbons with different tastes sourced from all over the United States. Proof is 90. Its age has no statement on the bottle, but it has to be, of course, at least two years. Um, just a little bit of history about the company and the bourbon. Nothing too in-depth because we'll probably at some point do a full thing about William Grant and Sons. Sure. Uh, so in 1887, after a year of hard work, a man named William Grant and his nine children established their first distillery. Nine children. You know, not a lot to do back in the day yeah. when the lights go out. Right. <laughs> and maybe more. You know, a lot of them died. <laughs> it's getting dark. <laughs> and their first spirit flowed on Christmas Day of that year. This is 1887. Just five years later, they opened a second distillery and there was no looking back. The business is still family owned to this day and through various acquisitions has become the third largest producer of scotch, wow. second only to Diageo and Pinot Ricard. Wow, that's incredible. It really is. Known for such brands as Glenfiddich, Balvenie, Kinnan V, Monkey Shoulder, and Grants. They also own the Irish whiskey brand Tullamore Dew, the famous whiskey liqueur Drambuie. Wow. The highly regarded premium gin brand Hendrix, and most recently, New York's Tuttletown Distillery, which makes the Hudson brand of whiskeys, unfortunately, of which Ed and I are not fans. Not tremendously, no. I've had it several times, too. Yeah. And people make a big deal of it, so I give them credit for that. Right. So, Fistful of Bourbon, of course, riffs on the famous Clint Eastwood 1964 Spaghetti Western, Fistful of Dollars. It's the company's first American whiskey crafted in house by malt master Brian Kinsman, who is 2017's International Spirits Challenge Master Blender of the Year, and Kelsey McKechnie, the world's youngest female malt master apprentice in the industry. Right. Now, I'm not sure how that breaks down. Brian Kinsman is the malt master of Linfitic, which is a full-time job in its own, right? Mm. And my understanding was that Kelsey was working under him. But most of what I read has Kelsey McKechnie as being the blender of Fistful of Bourbon. Yeah. But I also understand that I think she's around 26, 27 when this brand was launched. So I can see them not just sticking her out there on her own. Hey, here's our right. new bourbon brand. Go ahead, Kelsey. Have fun with it. Wow, that's really young. She is very young for what she does in their company. But I'm reading an article right here, and it says, Combine the arts and science behind whiskey blending, Scotland's own Kelsey McKechnie has perfected the craft of bourbon. McKechnie, a blender at William Grant & Sons, has created Fistful of Bourbon, right. 100% straight American whiskey consisting of five bourbons. These two-year age bourbons, when combined together, pack a potent, powerful punch. Now, Ooh, uh, nice alliteration. I just, yeah, that was by Alex Gonzalez. <laughs> nice job, Alex. Um, <laughs> and this was in um, Crave DFW website. Okay. And it was in... Um, August 27th of 2018. Okay. So this is when the brand just launched. Sure. It, you know, it launched, I think, on the 21st of August. So this is a week into it. She's introducing it, and they're already calling her the creator in this article. I have to believe if that wasn't the case, yeah. they would have clarified that. So cool. do I believe that she's under him? Yeah. The way, like, the head coach is under a general manager, but the head yeah. coach is still out there coaching the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Her title is Malt Master Apprentice, and he's the Malt Master. So. Right. They knew where they wanted to get to, and then they went out and they found the sourced whiskey that they wanted scott's going to talk about more in a minute the five different barrels all have a little bit of a different flavor profile mm. and being a 130 year old scotch maker they have access to so many people because they've traded barrels remember scotch is often finished in mm. used american bourbon right, barrels right. so for 130 years they've established relationships with american bourbon and whiskey companies all over the country yeah and in the scotch industry it's very common to blend barrels from different distilleries just Correct. like they're doing here right and scott and i have had a good experience with blending we really have we've tasted blends uh, several times on the podcast absolutely yeah. and so um i think it's time that we see what this fistful of bourbon has to offer yeah so and, brian and kelsey together uh -huh. they tasted dozens of bourbons right mixing them in different combinations to arrive at a blend of just five like the fingers of a fist right each with its own tasting characteristics and here are the five sweet balanced and smooth 
Green and leafy with floral notes. Mm -hmm. Warm spice and hints of nutmeg. Notes of buttery toffee. Oh, nice. And hints of cinnamon and licorice. And so, like they say on their website, it ain't just a bourbon. It's a damn fistful. There you go. (laughs) So, let's nose this now. Yeah. We have it in a neat glass. Um, I'm getting very, very traditional bourbon notes vanilla caramel smell very low alcohol for it's 90 proof yeah i'm getting very low alcohol even in just a regular tumbler mm. so that bodes well we have the tasting notes from whiskey judge do you want to oh, yeah the nose yeah what, what does whiskey judge say the nose uh, so he agrees with this corn vanilla caramel orchard fruit nuts and copper yeah i'm okay with that yeah oh god i can't wait to taste it we've had this bottle for months mm. Mm. okay Ooh, corn yeah it's so much corn it's there's a lot on the finish. I think you taste the different barrels on the finish, not in the beginning. Yeah. The initial taste is a unified front. All five of the mixed expressions have come together to form their own whiskey. And then as I swallow it, I get like a dancing of flavors in the finish. Yeah. Where I can see a lot of what they're saying. I'm going to taste it again. Uh, the, the corn I'm kind of getting, not only the sweet corn in the beginning, but as you said, does its dance. I kind of taste like almost, and this is going to sound bad, but it's not, like a burnt popcorn taste. Like just, um, not burnt, but like no, just. I, that, yeah, not burnt, but I know what you're saying. Like a toasted. To- toasted. Yes. yes. Almost Thank like you. you're picking up the char of the barrel that one of them was in, uh, and that's what it was. Yeah, definitely. And by the way, there is more alcohol on the finish than on the nose yes. or on the initial thing. Not Agreed. in a bad way, but it definitely is not thin. It punches you. There is spice. Yes. And also, it's spicy enough that it can be used in most cocktails. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Because this is pretty cheap. 25 25 to $28. Yeah. So it's got a very nice price point right now. Mm. But I have to tell you, I'm drinking it straight, and I'm not disappointed in it. No, I, I really like it I'm straight. about to switch to it on the rocks to see, because sometimes that opens up different flavors. Yeah, so here's what whiskey jug has to say about the palate and the finish corn rye caramel nuts fruit vanilla copper and a touch of oak and spice on the finish he has corn vanilla oak spice and a hint of cream soda Hmm. i'm tasting like a clove or something on the finish or a mint or something like there's something like menthol Mm -hmm. or pine it's a little bit pungent it's a little bit of a pungent yeah finish it's different. Yeah. I, I, I really like it. I'm, I, I'm very surprised. I am surprised too. I mean, because it only has a minimum age statement of two years, you know, we question sometimes if people are just trying to rush stuff to market. Yeah. Do you taste it on the water? I am right now. Yeah. Mm. It opens up so much more the finish. This is where I start to get the menthol or the floral notes on the finish on water. They uh, really come out. You know what? Maybe what you're tasting is what the whiskey drug is saying is copper, or maybe that's what I'm tasting. Maybe. maybe. We, I mean, we all put our own right, our terminology own. on it. <laughs> right. We're definitely tasting something. It's a pronounced thing in the finish. Some people might not like it. I do. Yeah. I will definitely be making a Manhattan using this when we go off the air. Yeah. Wow. It, Let me uh, ask you, Ed. Sure. Before we sign off. Yeah. Have you ever seen Fistful of Dollars? Or? I've seen it like four times. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Spaghetti Western. I mean, Outlaw Josie Wales doesn't quite count as that, but it's like my favorite Western movie. Yeah. Good, the Bad, the Ugly. I like that one. Yeah, that's actually one of the sequels to Fistful of right. Dollars. Yeah. yeah. He did about half a dozen movies. It was uh, Clint Eastwood's first starring role. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's great because he didn't have to really talk yeah. that much. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. To, that's true. It's for him like, to be such a great director and actor, to have started in four movies where he barely spoke, yeah. which, where he made Rambo look like a fucking like, chatterbox, <laughs> you know? He's done more good movies after the age of 80 than some people ever do. Yeah. yeah. Right? You know, Gran Torino was great. He just did The Mule, where he had two threesomes at the age of 88. Wow. A lot of Viagra on that set. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> seriously, cases of Viagra. <laughs> cases. Well, this has just taken a turn where William <laughs> Granton was hoping we would just sign off before he got to Clint Eastwood's <laughs> I know. threesomes. Sorry, it's my fault. <laughs> but, hey, this is why we call ourselves the Whiskey Tangent <laughs> exactly. Podcast, everybody. We, exactly. we go on tangents. So, All right, so final thoughts on the whiskey. Surprised for the price point to be so drinkable straight, to be so enjoyable overall. Ooh, I'm getting a lot of peanuts now. Right, because now it's watered down a little bit more. It's uh, proofed down to probably around 80. The fire's down, and it's opening up. I definitely just taste peanuts a little bit myself, too. Yeah, crazy. I just taste a little bit of peanuts myself. Um, He definitely did not say penis. No, peanuts. So um, Peanuts. I've never tasted the other. But um, (laughs) so the, um, so yeah. Crickets. um, (laughs) 
<laughs> anyway, oh. I want to uh, thank Fistful of Bourbon for the request. Indeed. We appreciate your product. It's delicious. And for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. And if you got a chance, sip a dram of Fistful of Bourbons and watch Fistful of Dollars. <laughs> yeah. Be well, everybody. Happy trails. Happy trails.